is Jim Rupp. I play drums with the Cleveland Jazz Orchestra. My name is Teresa May. I am one of the trumpet players in uh, Cleveland Jazz Orchestra. My name is Dave Banks, and I play lead trumpet with the Cleveland Jazz Orchestra. Hey, you guys. How's it going? This is Chris Coles with the Cleveland Jazz Orchestra. Um, I play alto saxophone and clarinet and flute in that band. I'm Paul Ferguson, artistic director of the Cleveland Jazz Orchestra. My name is Aiden Plank. I'm the bassist with the Cleveland Jazz Orchestra. I'm Scott Garlock, and I'm a trombone player and am executive director of the Cleveland Jazz Orchestra. I think for every one of us, uh, it's a combination of both. You learn on the bandstand, and most of us all have learned in school. Went to Ohio State, graduated with a music ed degree. Uh, that, actually, by the time I started Ohio State, there was no jazz degree, so I was a quote-unquote classical music major, but I, they eventually got a jazz drum set guy, a guy there named Jim Curlis, who was a great teacher, and Dr. Moore was my, again, classical teacher. Um, so I had kind of both backgrounds. And when I was in school, there'd be days I'd play six hours a day in college between marching band, orchestra, concert band, jazz ensemble, small group percussion ensemble. I loved playing music, so I did it all. My musical education includes a Master of Music Performance degree from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and a Bachelor of Music Performance from the University of Akron. I've studied trumpet with Claude Gordon in Los Angeles, Mario Gennari in San Francisco, Bob O'Donnell, Ralph Kimball, Scott Johnston, Robert Dolick, and Frank Bradshaw. So I got my degree, my master's from the University of Akron, and I got my undergraduate at Youngstown State. Um, and that's my formal training. I, I believe that like any gig that you're on is like, I would consider it like informal training, but th to me like that's more valuable, playing on a gig and playing with people uh, that have been doing it for a long time. I went to school for a trumpet performance. I went to the University of Dayton, and then I went to uh, Cincinnati Conservatory of Music for my master's degree in trumpet performance. I have no formal uh, musical training in the form of going to a conservatory or a college to study music. I actually have a biology degree from Cleveland State, but while I was a Cleveland State student, I played in their uh, jazz ensembles, I played in their big band, I played in uh, a combo, uh, and it was actually a really great thing to do because of my abilities as a musician. Um, I got a nice scholarship to help cover my tuition at Cleveland State because I played the bass. I played in the wind ensembles as well as the jazz ensembles there. Um, kind of anything that I could participate in, I participated in. Um, I grew up playing in Salvation Army brass band, so that was a huge part of my upbringing and um, kind of the foundation of my sound. I was recruited into the Akron Jazz Workshop, directed by Roland Pellucci. I started on the fourth chair and eventually worked my way up to the lead trumpet chair. I began gigging professionally, working Vegas style shows at the Tangier, ice shows, circus shows, along with fronting my own rock band. I did extra work with the Akron and Canton Symphonies, and then I was called one day to work the Wayne Newton show in Youngstown, where I met the touring trumpet player Al Longo. He was instrumental in my move to Las Vegas. After my time at the University of Akron, I was able to go to the Eastman School of Music and continue my studies, which were less trombone oriented and more jazz composition and arranging oriented. And once again, I had great teachers, in this case, Rayburn Wright and Bill Dobbins. Also during those years, we're talking about the middle 1980s when I was in my middle 20s, I was able to travel with the Glenn Miller Band and the Tommy Dorsey Band and see the country, make some money, and also learn from other friends. The circus came, play Memorial Auditorium in Canton, Ohio, and they carried a drummer and a conductor. Right after the 11 o'clock rehearsal, the drummer gets sick and appendicitis, rushed to the hospital. So the Jack was playing lead alto in the band at the circus. I couldn't get a hold of the guys in Canton who could cover that gig. So I called up my high school, got Joe Michigi, my director, and Joe came down to Miss Wise's English class, pulled me out of class, and I went down and played in the circus as what, probably a junior in high school. But who was in the band? Well, all the best players in Stark County were playing that gig. I ended up playing a two-week run. It was a great musical experience, but all of a sudden, I'm getting called to play with older players. That's great experience, great exposure. 
I was lucky and started uh, making money gigging while I was still in high school, so Kent was a real uh, obvious choice for me as a guy raised in Cuyahoga Falls. <clears throat> so I uh, started my own band maybe sophomore, junior year and started a gig, started to learn a lot. And then um, I went on the road about 10 weeks before graduating from college and did that for about seven months. And we played the same music in the same order was with a name band. And I returned from Illinois in 2003, rejoined the CJO and um, I've had a blast ever since. How did I get into jazz? Uh, I would honestly answer that I always was into jazz. My grandfather was a avid, avid Duke Ellington fan. I was listening to, just for fun, like when I was playing with Legos or something, I was listening to Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington. And My high school did not have a jazz band, which people find a little bit strange. I went to Oberlin High School and we did not have a jazz band. Um, I'm a bassist, so I didn't play in the concert band. I played in the orchestra at my high school. You know, if you're a trombone player, the, your opportunities are maybe somewhat limited compared to, say, a guitarist or a pianist or a vocalist. So you do what the table provides, and uh, making jazz was just kind of the easiest path to make no noise on my instrument, do the thing that I love so much. Uh, so most of my playing was in church actually at the Salvation Army and uh, later on at the, in, in Gabriel's Horns and I got into jazz from you know my mom and my dad loving smooth jazz so I transcribed a lot of uh, Kirk Whalum and Gerald Albright and uh, Grover Washington Jr. as a kid and uh, also hearing hip-hop's music and hearing the samples come from jazz really got me into playing jazz. Gigging is really fun I love doing it. Um, it's not easy, but I, I I really wouldn't do wouldn't do anything else. And I think making money doing it is really easy. You just have to be nice to people and take the time to practice and learn the music that you're being hired to play. There's always room to grow and always room to learn. Um, should always be um, trying to to learn or uh, improve in the areas that you're not so great at? No gig is ever the same. Uh, e even if you're doing a show for three weeks or six weeks and you're playing with the same people, every time you play it's going to be just kind of a different experience. It's one of the great attractions about making music because you're never going to go into work and come out of there feeling exactly like you did every other day like you might in some nine to five job. So that's a real attraction for it. You know, when you're a freelance musician, you know, you have to be able to fit in whatever somebody needs a musician. This is a word of mouth business, so getting that exposure is great. Great. You have to have the proper training and the proper skills to be more than just a, a one trick pony, to be more than just a jazz bassist, to have the ability to play in an, an uh, orchestra, to play in a, in a bass section, or to play things like musicals and shows where it's not just jazz bass, but you have to have good bowed skills, arco skills, and your reading has to be really good, you have to understand certain articulations and bowings and all these things. The main influences on the jazz side for me was Clark Terry, Clifford Brown, and Lee Morgan. Listening to a lot of Clifford Brown and Freddie Hubbard, those are probably two great jazz trumpet staples, um, and I've been listening to a lot of that right now. Um, as a bassist, I feel most influenced by the bassists Oscar Pettiford, Paul Chambers, Scott LaFaro, Charlie Hayden, Gary Peacock, Steve Swallow. Kenny Garrett is, is a huge influence on me. Um, Lately, I've been really into Logan Richardson and um, Christian Scott and Jake Sherman. I think he's a singer-songwriter, so I'm really into that stuff. Really into a lot of hip-hop like Jay Dilla and uh, Q-Tip, um, Kendrick Lamar. Musical influences. Well, obviously, early on, high school jazz band, it was all those great bands, Basie and Woody and Maynard, uh, Ellington, all of them. Um, drumming influences, obviously, was all those drummers, obviously. Buddy, I saw Buddy's band a whole bunch, got to meet Buddy. Buddy and I actually kind of got to be friends a little later on when we did shows together on Maynard's band and Woody's band. My first influences were listening to Chicago and the great James Panko. 
and the uh, Jazz Crusaders with Wayne Henderson. And then, like most in my ilk, we graduated to J.J. Johnson and Frank Rosalino and a host of other really outstanding players. Does performing other types of music make you a better jazz musician? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Trombonist, I had to learn how to play classical music and jazz. And in jazz arranging, it's really helpful if you have some knowledge of classical harmony. There's a part of every genre that relates to another genre. Um, and it just makes you uh, become a better musician, learning different uh, styles of music and different genres. Follow your passion. Be disciplined. I mean, it's like anything else. You want it to be, it should be fun. You should love and be hungry to sit down at a practice pad and, and uh, sit at the drums or play your tenor or play the trombone, whatever it is your passion is about. Just continually open doors, continue to listen, continue to practice, and rely on folks that are further along the path than you are and listen to them. To be a sponge. Learn all that you can with whoever you can learn it with. Duke Ellington said there's two kinds of music. There's good music and not good music, so just play the good music. Participate in as many different music experiences as you can. Definitely soak in all the opportunities right now while you have the time. Enjoy and respect the art of making music. If it becomes your passion, follow it and make your own voice. It will stay with you your whole life whether or not you make a career choice out of it. The love of music never dies.